Well, hello to this second issue of Edo Fit Talks. Today is with us uh, Drajan Kisan. He's a teacher of English here in Malaga. And well, we want to show how English affects financial education. We are well aware that it is an important topic that should be managed properly, especially in a place like Malaga. Um, well, in the next minutes, we're going to speak with Brian about financial topics and perhaps about some other issues. Hello, Brian. Hello, Jose Maria. Thanks very much for having me. Welcome. Uh, thank you for coming. This is, as I said before, our second issue. Yes, we are really one of uh, our new visitors in this space. We have for, talk for talking. Uh, not in an academic atmosphere, but in a more informal way. So let's see what you can tell us about financial education, about among other issues. Uh, first of all, uh, as a teacher of English, Irish, I didn't mention that before, settled in Malaga in the last years. Do you think we'd really speak good English in our city? Um, I don't want to start off on a negative note, but I think if we're being honest, and if you want to address a problem well, you need to be honest about it. And the truth is not very well. No. Well, it is not something new for me. No. We used to say in our curriculums that we speak and write English quite mm -hmm. well, but in practice, the general feeling perhaps is that you mentioned and well for you because it means you have a lot of jobs. That's true. That's true. And we'll see what we can do. But it has improved in the last few years, but there's I think there's still plenty of improvement um, left, but we're working at it and it's um, definitely something we can do. So do you think we have space to improve our competencies in English? Yes, definitely. Plenty of space. And of course, we're not looking for perfection. We don't want to set an unrealistic goal. We want to just first get some um, general competence of English, but um, there's definitely plenty of room to improve. Perhaps we shouldn't try to speak perfect English. That is something not reachable uh, exactly. for us, but at least being able to expose our ideas, speaking, writing. And well, for me, in my case, I feel glad for that. Mm -hmm. And no doubt that's opened a lot of doors. Um, for you, so the same can be for, for anyone, both in business and also in your personal life. So it's something I definitely recommend to everybody. Well, even for you, speaking English has opened the doors of the Finet. It certainly has. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it like that, but you could say that indeed. So, uh, by the way, speaking uh, before going to going deeper to the topic, uh, have you noticed a change in the methods of teaching and learning English? as a result of uh, the pandemic? Um, a change? Well, there's been a change in the means or the method. A lot of it has gone online. But unfortunately, the fundamental method of teaching has stayed the same in the academies and in the institutions and in the schools. So that part hasn't changed, but a lot of it has just moved online as opposed to being so much in person. Online works. In banking happens the same. Yeah. Uh, we thought this uh, digital process, this digital transformation would come, but not so quickly. Yeah, but we adapted well. Well, we were forced to adapt. So I think many people that were even skeptical about doing things online, even something like a class or a private class. That, um, But we had to adapt and we certainly did. And people saw the benefits, you know, there's positives and negatives to meeting in person or doing a class online. But there's there's certainly positives to being able to have that option. Well, I think we can take for granted this, that in the coming future, this online living will continue. Yeah, and it certainly makes, you can um, make better use of your time if you're doing more things online than having to physically go to a place. You can even have a, for example, with the classes, a lot of people have made use of a 30 minute class as opposed to an hour or longer. That in person isn't very practical because you have to travel and then spend some time. Well, we will speak but... later about saving, mm -hmm. saving money. That's but true. the reality is saving time mm -hmm. 
is quite important as well. It is something we have got uh, in the last month. Perhaps one of the few good lessons mm -hmm. we have taken from the pandemic. That's true. And it was Benjamin Franklin, wasn't it? You said time is money, so there you go. Time is money. Well, it makes me think about Benjamin Franklin. Well, perhaps we we'll speak about Franklin <laughs> later. So, uh, going a step further, you know Malaga, of mm -hmm. course. You've been living here for several years. You know our region. And, well, you know as well that our country, not only Andalusia, Spain as a whole, is mainly based our economy on the sector of services. Mm -hmm. So, do you think this can affect the way in which we learn English as a language? Can it affect it? I mean, it certainly can. If your if your work or your job is involved with foreign people or in the service industry dealing with people from other countries, of course, it can affect your level. It can motivate you to improve or to learn a bit more. But I don't think it should. I think this should be something personal, something that you as an individual should do before, and then this can then aid to your job later or whatever it may be, or even if you don't get a job in this sector, still, I think having a good level of English is, is something that we should all yeah, have well, general competence in. Services is a well-established mm -hmm. sector in Malaga, but uh, we have as well a lot of technology. Mm -hmm. That's and true. I think that in this world as well, uh, good manage of English can be quite useful as well. Yes, well, I mean, I don't know much about this, but many of my friends who are involved um, in this industry, they all say that all the new information and is all in English. So they have to, if they don't read it in the original version, they they get lost or they get left behind. So they really need to they need to adapt. Not to leave anyone behind. It mm -hmm. makes me recall the 2030 agenda. <laughs> uh, so, but going going back to the topic of uh, the jobs, uh, do you think? we should focus on the specialize on the topic of our profession or personal interest and speak a very specialized English, or should we try to have a not so depth competence, but having a wider use of lexicon? Um, I think it's certainly better to have a wider use or um, a wider understanding of English. And then it's easier then to transition on, in your job or whatever interests you may have. Now, in saying that, if you have a particular interest and that helps you to learn English, well, then that's great. You can use that to build up your skills in English, and then it's easier then to for that to translate into everyday English. But oh. not just one or the other, no, but you should have at least a general understanding. And then whatever personal interest you have or professional interest, that can be an added bonus. But, but in my case, and I think that in general, perhaps it's very difficult using the English spoken in the street. I mean, that common language, if it is very difficult reaching that skill if you are not in the place. Yeah, so that then depends on how you learn. If you're learning with a book or in a classroom, of course, that's going to be very different to speaking to people on the street but if you can somehow of course if you go to the country it's much easier if you're involved with the people but we live in the 21st century there's plenty of ways if you can't go to england or an english-speaking country there are plenty of ways to learn um how english is spoken by the everyday person with podcasts or series in general but if you focus on that or if you involve yourself with that you certainly can pick it up i would like to know how many of us when are watching a series on a platform, choose language instead of English, of uh, Spanish, when you're watching a film or a series? Yeah, not many, <laughs> but that's a high level of English. That's maybe after you learn the basics, after you can have um, conversations with people, then come the movies and the series, but we shouldn't be trying to jump directly to that. Maybe we could start um, a bit easier first and work our way up slowly but surely. So as, as we speak, I see how difficult I think it is translating all this to uh, our financial world. Mm, yeah, yes, you could say that. <laughs> we 
uh, manage, we use complex concepts, mm -hmm. abstract concepts, extremely in the world of economics, finance. And well, we really think in Edofinet. Now I will explain for you to know what Edofinet is, is how difficult mm -hmm. it is adding to this inherent uh, complexity the use of another language, English especially, that as we will see is by now, and this is something perhaps we could discuss as well, the language of commerce. Mm -hmm. As well, wait, mm -hmm. okay. now we'll go back, uh, we will go uh, to this topic later. Mm -hmm. So, we are in Edofinet. Edofinet is a financial project uh, now promoted by Unicaja Banco and Unicaja uh, the Banking Foundation, among several uh, institutions. And well, we try to provide basic competencies addressed to our citizenry on finance and, and economics. We were speaking before about serious the process that drives to watching a film in mm -hmm. English, it is something you don't get in a moment. It is a long process. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it is something I want to, to ask you that the sooner you begin that process, mm -hmm. the better and the better result you will get in the future. More or less, that is our main motto in Edofinet, teaching the youngest, mm -hmm. the sooner the better, mm -hmm. because teaching finance and economics will make them able to use this knowledge, these competencies in the future when they are adults. Mm -hmm. So going back to what Edofinet is, not only you have to learn about finance and economics, we think um, we as citizens should have a good use of English as well, as well. Mm -hmm. because you mentioned this before, in this wide world in which we live, this breezy getting in touch with a commercial offer coming from a different country and the easiest uh, language for you to understand it beyond Spanish, obviously will be Spanish, uh, English, sorry. So once I have said all this, uh, from your point of view, how do you think that English could be useful for financial literacy and uh, for an initiative, uh, a project like Edufinet? Well, I think you said it now, and you said that the world is basically in English. English is the lingua franca, whether we like it or not, and this is probably in every sector and in every um, subject, whether it be technology or um, business or whatever it may be. So finance is just another one of those. So any developments that are made, any, any, any news, that's, of course, it's probably going to be in English or maybe the best speakers or the best books on these topics are probably going to be in English first before they're eventually translated. So if you want to keep up to date, probably the best um, way is to actually directly get involved with in English, even discussing these topics with people. If you know English, then you have a wider range of people to, to speak to, to get ideas from. And this isn't just people from English-speaking countries, but really from every country, whether it be Germany or the Scandinavian countries, as, uh, that will be the, the common language between, well, yes, between everyone. In, in, in my case, I don't find some books in Spanish. Mm -hmm. If I want to read some new books about finance, you must read the English version. Exactly. The only one you have access. Or even now, well, it's a hot topic, but with all the cryptocurrencies, all this, the white papers and the news, it's all in English. And I know plenty of people who their English isn't the best, but they're forced to read these things in English because if they want to get involved with these and they want to get in early, they... They have to do it in English and they can't wait for it to be translated because then it literally will be too late. Yeah, but even when we speak about uh, 
books, finance books in English. Uh, I think it's a mm, good option reading them in English mm -hmm. because they are cheaper. You don't have to pay a translator. Not sure. And I have read awful translations mm -hmm. from English into Spanish, really yeah. often. When it's complex, no, it'll lose some of the, the true meaning of what the writer wants to say if it is translated away from the original language. So, but this reaffirms mm -hmm. the importance of using English. Mm -hmm. Because then you can go straight mm -hmm. to the source. Mm -hmm. You don't need a middleman. Yeah, exactly. Something, someone sort of in between translating for you. You have to pay for that mm -hmm. and you have to wait. Mm -hmm. So before you said English is la lengua franca. So you yeah, speak we Spanish. Say... We, we could have whole. No, this is this, uh, lingua franca is an Italian term <laughs> that we use. <laughs> well, the common language. The common language, exactly. A common language. Uh, lingua, you no, speak no, Spanish no. as well, uh, quite well, no. I think. Well, if you say so. Um, so, are we sure that English is now the common language in the world of finance and economics? I mean, would anybody disagree? Well, I don't know. This is a question. Uh, I don't. Uh, of course, we're sure, right? I don't think there's any competitor at the moment. No. no. Don't you think uh, a different language? could challenge this dominion of English? Not in not in the West, I don't think. It's been it's now in rooted English is now for a long, long time. It's it's um it's deep, no, in our not in in even the culture of other countries that if you go to another country, whatever and you don't share the same language, it'll probably be in English that you'll be speaking, or you go to an airport in airlines, right? The you have to speak in English if you want to be a pilot and well, but all of these finally, issues. a language is a sign of power. And uh, as we speak about uh, the Western decay, mm -hmm. and we see how some different uh, countries are rising, perhaps uh, we shouldn't be so convinced about this? Well, in the future, who knows? Of course, many people will say China will be the, and Chinese will be the new. That famous tweet by the president, of, the former president oh, of president. <laughs> China. So I think, yeah, many people will say that, and it's hard to disagree as well, but at least for the moment and for, for the foreseeable future, I think we'd be better off putting our time and energy into English. And of course, well, if we want to learn Chinese as well, that would be great. <laughs> Well, but coming coming back to Europe, since uh, the Brexit, I don't think we have an alternative to understand each other in, in our continent, even without UK. I think we don't have an alternative. But did you English. suggest Spanish or German or French I or something? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, but so it shows. It really shows as well that. Uh, there is a sort of uh, trend that reflects how power yeah. is it's, at it's, the same time reflected in the language we it's, use. It's thanks to the US, I suppose, no? They, for a long, long time, they were the richest country in the world, or yeah, and they had the highest GDP and most powerful. So I think that shows there's a reason we're speaking English right now, and I think a lot of it is, is thanks to the US. Well, let's go, let's go back to a more pedagogical logical matters. I'm thinking about the youngest. Mm -hmm. I underlined the importance we give to teaching the, the youngest. When I mean the youngest, I mean children perhaps from seven, eight mm -hmm. years to 16. This is our main target mm -hmm. when we teach young people in Edofinet. Uh, until now, young people from 12 to 16, more or less. But now we have added to this group children for 8 to 12. Oh, well, very good. Uh, following the, the main recommendations given by institutions as the OCD or the European Commission. So thinking about the, the youngest, uh, do you think it could be possible teaching about finance and at the same time using English as uh, the language? Uh, why not? Yeah, as you said earlier, I mean, the, 
the earlier you bet, the better you can learn about these. Um, so about finance and of course English as well. So why not start young? And it could be done in English, of course. In fact, oftentimes in schools they try to teach English as a as a second language, as a subject, and it's not very successful. But then it's when schools start teaching other subjects in English that um, children and kids can learn English um, a bit better. So why not um, teach uh, finance in English as well? I think we will have to experiment. Um, yeah, I suppose. Or just do it and jump in at the deep end and see what happens. So Certainly related. better than other subjects we learn at school. You could argue that learning about finance and English is much better than other things. So, so should we teach English with economy or economy in English? Um, you could do both. You could do economy in English and then also teach English and economy separately. Well, we have time to experiment. Yeah. So more or less, uh, you suggest that uh, English should be compulsorily taught in the school uh, from the point of view of uh, financial topics? Should it be compulsory? Uh, I mean, it should definitely be a subject. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to be an individual that's going to learn English by themselves more than being taught in, a, in an institution or in a school. Oftentimes... Even young kids, they will learn because they get involved in video games or they watch videos on YouTube and they learn themselves. They can't, they can't only rely on the schools to learn. That's only a limited time during, during the week. And it's, it's focused in certain areas with more people. But if, they can, if this can be an aid to them learning, that's, of course, that could be beneficial. Well, I have to tell you that this is a controversial topic about teaching finance and economics at the school compulsorily i mean in spain yeah. especially and well in general i think in some other countries but these topics specifically are these subjects or the teacher or something economy economy yes. uh, about economy and finance i mean i know in my country in ireland we were never taught about that either so i i wonder why but it's um, a very important subject uh, for people well, to know about finally of course i think you should study like i did about minerals <laughs> and sometimes you never find a mineral in your life that's true but of course you find a current account or a loan you certainly do or even but, microtransactions where we do every yes, day yes but it is not so clear from the point of view of the uh, usefulness i mean what we should teach our children as well but I think we agree these are useful competencies and comp competencies we will use, of course, in a certain point of our lives. Or at every point in our lives. Economics and finance is something that we get involved with every day, so I can't think of anything more useful, to be honest. So from your point of view, you are not a specialist on finance, but I think you could tell us uh, what kind of financial concepts do you think are the most important? I suppose personal savings, creating a budget, learning about taxes is very important. Investing, maybe um, how mortgages work or taking out a loan. These things, I think. How the inflation affects yeah, that's your true. savings that's true. now that's in true. nowadays. Mm -hmm. Usually people don't know what inflation is. No, they certainly don't. But it affects your pocket. It does, and they think maybe it doesn't because the number in the bank account stays the same. But of course we know that the purchasing power drops. Um... Good, good concept. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it's something to be aware of. And I think it can then affect then your decisions, your daily decisions. And then that can affect then bigger things in life, no? As... As the expression goes, if you look after the pennies, the pounds will look after themselves. So, you like that one, dear? That's so, a nice expression. Right, no? I've so, never heard that. Yeah, yeah. I remember my father taught me that one. So, Irish and Irish expression. I don't know. I don't think it's Irish, but it's certainly... Well, it could be, but well, well, certainly... So, step by step, finally. Exactly. You can find in your way yeah. something good. Exactly. Make good small decisions, and then later... You, uh... that's, that's a good philosophy for uh -huh. life. 
So you mentioned uh, budgeting, mm -hmm. personal budgeting. Uh, so you are running a business, perhaps small now. Who knows? It is a could be smaller in the future. <laughs> no, no, <I'm laughs> I know. big business in we'll the see, future. We'll see. Uh, so you manage your professional and your personal finances. Mm -hmm. I was given good advice by an accountant recently to have a business account. So not to have all your money in the same um, savings account, but have your personal and then also have your uh, business account because that's not your money. That's the that's money of your business. Tip. It that's certainly was. Tip. I couldn't believe that was the first time. Just only a couple of months ago, um, he told me. He was an accountant and I couldn't believe that was the first time someone had ever mentioned that to me. It was the first time I heard of it, but I did it right away. Well, there is as well an element of psychology mm -hmm. in that yeah, yeah, because that's true. you follow a double uh, accountancy mm -hmm. personal true. and professional yeah you keep them separate and not mix those two things and uh, before you mentioned investing mm -hmm. i will not ask if you invest uh, but do you know the difference between saving and investing or do you think they are uh, the same in practice, no, they're quite they're quite different concepts. Savings, putting money away, putting it into a bank or a savings account, whereas investing, of course, is putting your money away and and trying to make a good decision to get a return, even if it be small, even if it be a, uh, be a couple of percentage uh, percent a year, but trying to make some return on your money. You are using a lot of financial concepts return well they are part of our mm -hmm. lives that's true that's it they're very basic terms and of course they're difficult maybe at the beginning but once you once you learn a little then you can see it more clearly in everyday life and you start to build up uh, a bit know. of knowledge when i teach uh, at university i try to make uh, students see mm -hmm. that i'm not explaining something new mm -hmm. i'm explaining something they do in their everyday life mm -hmm. and uh, I think this is a good point as well, showing how all this knowledge, all these competencies are alive. Mm -hmm. They are not dead. They work. Some people say the money makes the world go round, and it's, it's hard to disagree as well. I mean, money's involved in everything we do in life, whether we're buying something small or getting involved with bigger things. So why not be skilled or at least a little bit uh, competent in these in these areas? So. As you said before, saving and investing is different, and there come to new expressions or concepts. The yield, the benefit, and the risk. Mm -hmm. It is something we all should be well aware <coughs> of as well. That's true. Well, this is life is like this as well. No, you take a risk for the hope of uh, of some benefits. Now, even you, if you study or you spend time doing something, you're risking this time, hoping that later you will yield some benefit or get some benefit. So, of course, this is closely related to, to finance, but I think it's it's part of everyday life. So if you can see it maybe clearly in this area, maybe then you can even transfer this knowledge into into other things in life as well. Transferring knowledge and transferring time. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the concept of time as well. We said in the formula to calculate the interest you get from savings mm -hmm. or investing, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> time plays a key role. Mm -hmm. And finally, what finance offers is taking time to this moment. Mm -hmm. And those incomes you will get in the future, you get, you get it now, mm -hmm. you pay for it in the future. And of course, it is, if it is a loan, Mm -hmm. You have to add to the return of the capital, mm -hmm. the payment of an interest. Yeah, There's exactly. the price you have to pay for getting that capital. And I think these are mm, commonly known concepts. Yeah, they're, they're fairly simple, but maybe they could be clearer as well in many people's... I mean, I think I learned these concepts very later in life, whereas I learned a lot of things at school that maybe now I never used or wasn't very useful to me, but it would have been nice maybe to have known these things before, being able to practice, and then, of course, then you'd be, you'd um, have more knowledge of these 
um, subjects now and be more competent. Yeah, in this case, I think like uh, Aristotle or Plato, I think this knowledge is inside of us. When we teach, when we show these concepts to people, sometimes they realize it is not it is not something so new. Yeah, that's true. Oftentimes they're quite simple and um, intuitive. No, you think it's so simple. You think, why didn't you know it before? And the most important thing, it can make your life better. Well, it certainly can. It certainly can. Or destroy it. If, well, we, if we see a bad management. That's true. That's true as well. But then you can see that. You know? And of course, with all of these things, you can make good decisions and bad decisions. But then that's part of life. You take the good and the bad. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But hopefully overall. Well, but if you manage well, usually you win. Yeah. And of course, I mean, that's even even going back to investing. No, I mean. All the investors, they lose money, but the idea is to win overall. And of course, winning doesn't mean you become rich. No, of course not. But if you can... It means uh, fighting against inflation. Exactly. Maintaining the purchasing power of uh, your savings. Exactly. Being able to choose a, a good mortgage exactly. uh, when yeah. you buy your home. But we have... Uh, and and it can of... be dangerous, in fact, actually to try to make too much money whether it be investing or whatever that can be counterproductive because then you can lose everything but if you can make a safe a relatively safe investment and as you said uh, save yourself some money and well we have i think we have to pay attention to vulnerable groups mm -hmm. and uh, surprisingly we have now started a new <laughs> section of edufinet it is edufia sport more mm -hmm. english oh wow edufia yeah. sport edufia talk <laughs> and one of our topics is teaching professional uh, sportmen and women how to manage the money they get oh, wow. when they are very young. Mm -hmm. They have a short career. Mm -hmm. They retire very soon. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, there are a lot of cases in which mm -hmm. there is a bad management mm -hmm. of finance. Mm -hmm. And when they are 30 or 35, they are completely broken. Mm -hmm. Bankrupt, yeah. I'm even sure there's millions of stories of people that have won the lottery or have gotten a lot of money very quickly and then they ended up losing everything. So education or at least information could uh, help uh, to stop some of this. Okay, Ryan, we're finishing. Just uh, one last question to know how is the world around Spain, the world we don't know, not speaking about Ireland. Do you think the situation about financial education, financial education for just is similar to Spain? Are you more advanced, less, the same? Um, I don't think so. I don't think we're more advanced, that's for sure. At least not in my day. When I went to school, there was no talk um, of financial education. We had business class, but again, that wasn't really so involved with this. And I don't think it has improved. And even in the general conversation of people still... People don't like to talk about money and talk about investing. They try to sh they maybe shy away from this topic. So um, I think, again, we have uh, a, lot of, a lot of room to improve. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, your students are lucky of having you as a teacher. And I hope you have enjoyed this uh, Edufi talk. And, of course, you are welcome to come back and... Uh, we could uh, continue speaking about economics, finance, and English. No, that would be great. Thanks very much for having me. I enjoyed it very much, and I hope to do it again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.